25th year. The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports. It seems for every boxer there is one pivotal match, one fight which reveals the winning truth or the sorry consequences. This weekend, Mike Tyson feels the effects of his attack on Holyfield, the subsequent disqualification, and the indefinite revocation of his boxing license. And with Evander Holyfield now looking for more fights, Lennox Lewis needs a victory tonight. After he destroyed Razor Ruddock in 1992, Lewis was a hot item. When Riddick Bowe trashed one of his three championship belts, Lewis fished it out of the garbage to claim his first heavyweight title. But in 1994, Lewis suffered his own consequences. Underprepared, he was knocked out by Oliver McCall in the second round. Lennox Lewis has been struggling for respect ever since. Many felt he'd lost last year's Madison Square Garden war with Ray Mercer, even though Lewis got the close decision. And even when Lewis won his title back in February, there was an asterisk. That was the night Oliver McCall chose not to fight back, giving Lewis doubters another opportunity for skepticism. So at 31 years old, Lennox Lewis needs to win tonight and to leave no doubt along the way. Meanwhile, challenger Henry Akinwande also needs a win to position himself in the Holyfield sweepstakes. Yes, Akinwande's beaten everyone he's fought, like middle-of-the-rung heavyweights Jeremy Williams and Alexander Zolkin. But Akinwande's never faced a championship-caliber fighter like Lennox Lewis. And in his last fight, he looked awkward and couldn't put journeyman Scott Welch away. The 31-year-old Akinwande has been called an imposter before and won't be able to fake it against Lewis tonight. So who's for real and who's a pretender to the throne? We'll find out next. Sunny Lake Tahoe, a hot spot for water sports, skiing, gambling, tonight, boxing. You'll see Lennox Lewis in his first title defense since having beaten the emotional Oliver McCall, taking on number one contender, Henry Akinwande. We are at Caesars Tahoe, and we wish you were here too. Two large men who hail from England will take center stage here tonight. Many in the boxing community awaiting the outcome with more than the usual interest because with Mike Tyson apparently away from boxing at least for a year, Evander Holyfield may well look to the winner of this fight as a future opponent. Six foot five inch Lennox Lewis, who usually has a height advantage, will be looking up tonight at six foot seven inch Henry Akinwande. And we too are expecting big things two tallest men ever to get into the ring for a heavyweight championship fight. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to this unusual site for a heavyweight title fight that takes place under very unusual circumstances because as of the past couple of weeks, there's room at the top in the heavyweight division. Lennox Lewis is hoping to use his title belt as leverage toward a possible People's Championship fight against Evander Holyfield. Henry Akinwande wants that belt for precisely the same reason. Working with me as always, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. And Larry, yesterday as we were preparing for this fight, Lennox Lewis's trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, said a fascinating thing, saying to us that he had told his fighter Lennox, as a fan, I'm more interested in seeing the August 16 Ray Mercer versus Andrew Galat about on HBO than I am in watching your fight. Why in the world would Stewart say that to Lewis? 
He's trying to shake the sand off him, Jim, because Lennox Lewis spends a lot of time lolling on Jamaican beaches between fights and sometimes seems to carry that kind of Caribbean languor and self-satisfaction into the ring with him as well. And satisfaction can be the death of desire. So Stewart has been saying to him, it's more than just winning. It's more than just going out there and doing a professional job. You have to grab the public by its throat. It's not enough just to say you are the first British heavyweight champion of this century. It's not enough to be able to point out to critics that, R that Riddick Bowe gave away a belt rather than fight you, or that Mike Tyson gave away a belt and four million dollars rather than fight you. You have to amaze the fans to want them to come out to see you. The problem is that's a very tall order against a very tall fighter who is a boxer. Tall order, indeed, the order of the evening. And if the winner of this fight can't get a date with Holyfield, maybe he can get a match with the other giant draw in the heavyweight division, two-time world champion George Foreman. George, let's talk a little bit more about Emmanuel Stewart's attempts to goad Lewis into fighting with a more exciting style. Does Lewis have to do that, or should he stick with what he's thought in the past, that it's okay just to keep winning the fights? Well, that's the danger when you bring in someone out of the camp who wasn't there originally, when you put all the money and you invested the time. Lennox Lewis is highlighted here. He's the, the top attraction because he's winning. You stop that, you're not on HBO long. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, so if he's doing what he should do, continue to win, and all the other stuff comes along with it. Don't go out there and do anything else but win. All right. Well, it's a fascinating relationship between Stewart and Lewis. There are some moments when Emmanuel will say that Lennox is as talented as any heavyweight ever. There are others when he'll tell Lennox that nobody cares about him. Let's see why. For Lennox Lewis, Judgment Day has arrived. Time has come for him to emerge from the shadows that have marked his bewildering career and come to terms with his split personality. Will we see the spectacular fighter who has proven he can dominate opponents? Right hand to the body! Braddock in trouble! We have a great new heavyweight! Or will we see the brooding and reluctant Lewis, the one who has lacked that vital killer instinct? And now Lewis is hurt by the right hand! Lennox Lewis's career has been a roller coaster for a lot of different reasons. I think it's a lot to do with his mental makeup. He's too conservative and too intelligent and too analytical in the ring. It's like a chess game in a sense, and uh, it's a game where you have to use your strategy. And in some situations, he will become more aggressive, and then on another night, the real true Lennox will dominate, and he will become more conservative, even in situations when it's not even necessary. And that is what has stopped him from becoming the fighter that he is capable of being. So who is the fighter? And can he live up to all that promise and potential? For now, it seems, even when Lennox Lewis wins, he loses, as was the case in his rematch with Oliver McCall for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Let's get it on! My main goal was just to go in there and get back my WBC belt. After I hit him with a combination, it kind of went dancing back. He basically panicked. Paul is doing a very strange thing here, folks. He's wandering around the ring. He hasn't gone to his corner, and he's trying to figure out what's gone wrong. It's like an, an off switch went off in his head, and he just turned, and he went into a different person. This is a bizarre display. I personally have never seen anything like it. Started crying in the ring. He's crying in his corner. I've never seen anything like this. He's overwhelmed with some sort of emotion. I train for a fight, but I never trained for this kind of uh, uh, situation that occurred. And it's placed Lennox Lewis in an awfully difficult and awkward position. Lewis doing what he has to do. Emmanuel Stewart actually told me, let's just go ahead and try to end it. You wonder how much longer Mills Lane will allow this to go on. And that's, that's going to be it. With a whimper, not a bang, Lennox Lewis has just become the WBC World Heavyweight Champion for the second time in his career. I wanted to win the belt you know, outright, especially with a good knockout. But it was a situation where everybody really focused on him crying and his ant antics and him not really wanting to fight. But what can you do? What Lennox should do now is throw caution to the wind. 
Is greatness still on the horizon? Only he can answer that question. And his reply must come tonight with a convincing win over Henry Akinwande. It's fair to call Lennox Lewis an English man, but an extremely talented man. I recently had a conversation with Lennox where I explained to him that he's a good fighter and he will remain a good fighter maybe, but he will never become a great fighter unless he's willing to take a risk and that all great people take risks. And he has to, from here, go on and start being impressive. And being impressive in every fight, not just every other fight, but still the public, and that's what really counts. They don't respect and appreciate his talent, and justifiably so. Until he wins a major big fight, the public is not gonna ever appreciate him. My day's gonna come where I'm gonna be in a fight where all of a sudden I'm gonna go out there and look spectacular. Right now, you could say I'm just climbing a hill and soon to reach the top. So can Lewis ever again create the kind of excitement he created with his knockout of Razor Ruddock? That question hovers over this bout as it has over every Lennox Lewis bout for the past five years. Larry, let's turn our attention to the much less well-known subject of Henry Akinwande. If this fight had taken place a year and a half, two years ago, it would have been regarded as an enormous mismatch. Now it's seen as a potentially close fight. Just how big a threat is Akinwande to Lewis? Well, he might hug him to death, but, but he really is a threat. The main reason is, is that he is a live fighter. By that I mean that he exudes a certain kind of energy and ambition, like a racehorse that's just raring to run. Secondly, he's one of those fighters who they say of him, who needs him? As in, who needs him because he's so hard to beat? Or who needs him because even if you beat him, you can't look good? Or who needs him because even if you beat him, you're not going to get much credit for it or make a whole lot of money for it. Well, we have two fighters who might be classified in that category, and so maybe we'll have a who needs them kind of fight, or maybe we'll have a revelation. And Jim, this fight opened at almost three to one odds for Lewis. All the late money coming in on Akawande, it's down to seven to five. A lot of professionals I speak to like Akawande. Well, and for the reason that a lot of people wonder what Lewis's style will do, will do for him against a taller fighter. A guy like Lennox Lewis goes his whole career, George Foreman, thinking that every opponent is going to be smaller. Now he has to prepare to fight a guy who is taller and has a longer reach. How much different? I think it's perfect. Your defense is built around keeping your hands up at all times. When you fight the shorter opponents, you have a tendency to lower your hand. So he'll have a chance to highlight his defense. And he look, he went in with Riddick Bowe and the amateurs, and he had a good experience uh, during the Olympics with taller guys. So it, this will not be a horse of another color, so to speak, tonight. George has always been kind to Lewis in his public comments. Let's see if he can uphold your faith in him as he gets ready to fight a guy who, like so many at this level of the sport, has had a fascinating and unusual personal path. Let's get to know better the Nigerian Brit, Henry Akinwande. Henry Akinwande, boring, obscure, never tested. For the towering Nigerian fighter, these ring identity challenges persist. They're nothing compared to the obstacles he faced as a child. One thing people doesn't know about me is that I have the opportunity to live in Africa. You know, and don't forget, you know, I have the opportunity to see both sides of the world, you know, and I knew what it's like for the people who doesn't have nothing. Trying to escape the poverty of his country by taking up boxing was costly. As a teenager, Henry defied his father and Nigerian traditions. The way the African parents, you know, deal with their children is different from the way American, you know, parents deal with their children. They tell you something, you have to do it. You go against their will, if things doesn't work out, don't come back home. That is like that kind of attitude and, uh, I mean, but I knew what I'm letting myself in for, you know, so, but uh, I just, that's something in me that I just want to do boxing. Fifteen and penniless, Akinwande severed himself from his roots, moving from his homeland to the hope of bigger money in London. I started very, very poor. You know, sometimes I only eat maybe once a day. I cannot even pay my bills. I cannot even pay nothing, you know. And it's just like, it got to a stage, you know, my friends start saying, Henry, why can't you go and get another job, you know, because you've been trying to box, you know, all this time, and you're not getting paid. Far from home, Akinwande remained estranged from his father to the day he died. I don't have no father figure. I know my mom died when I was young, so 
Most of the things that I've been doing, I've achieved so far, is just the God's will. But mere inspiration wasn't enough for the six foot seven inch European heavyweight. While in England, his perfect record of 27 victories gave him hope, but his mission stalled. British fans didn't care. His performances were dull. Everywhere I go, except England, people love watching me. If they don't go along with me, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. As long as the people who spend my money, I mean, he's paying, he's paying for me to fight. Bigger money offers came from America. So Akinwande exiled himself from the UK three years ago. Trains in Houston, lives in Florida. Next, Akinwande adjusted his style by tapping Don Turner as the new trainer. The veteran teacher was last year's trainer of the year and guided Evander Holyfield to his victories over Mike Tyson. And I'm more than determined to prove these people wrong, you know, so I can, I mean, I'll go through anything, you know, just to get, I mean, just to prove them wrong. And, you know, for, to have people like Don Turner, you know, it's just, I mean, it's just like, it's just like the last thing in the puzzle. You gotta force him the opposite way. This way he's not used to going. Come on, let's go! Their first test together was against sometime contender Jeremy Williams. This guy is ready to go as soon as you hit him. The reborn fighter exploded with a more aggressive style and grabbed a fringe title. That is the proudest moment of my life because, I mean, I, I mean, when that thing happened, I mean, oh, I mean, I just went back to when I, the time that I started struggling, you know, and I went back to when those people in England start saying this and saying that. So the flack diminished and progress continued. Next challenge, Russian Southpaw Alexander Zolkin. The Nigerian-born giant played master technician, showcasing Turner's favorite weapon. Do your thing. Come on. The most important punch in boxing is a jab. You got a guy with a good jab, he's going to be very hard to beat. Especially a big guy like him. Short guy got to work twice as hard to get to him. And then when he gets to him, he gets hit more. Larry Holmes, Saul Mamby, Chris Tiozo, Mike McCallum. Henry got the fastest jab as a heavyweight. Despite improvements, the old credibility gap lingers, making Akinwande's passion his haven as well. I'm in peace, you know, with myself by doing boxing. That's something in me, you know, like just, just keep saying, don't quit, you know, and, and I'm glad I did not. Tonight, a lifetime of sacrifice yields for Akinwande his biggest opportunity. His elusive dream is within reach, but never more uncertain. Tale of the tape, and you are going to see two heavily muscled, well conditioned heavyweights in the ring tonight. Lewis weighing in at 242, Akinwande 237 and a half. Four inch reach advantage for Akinwande. They're the same age, and the time is now. Larry? Two points about these numbers, Jim. They emphasize the change in British heavyweights from horizontal jokes to vertical forces. And also, there's that 242 by Lewis. Nine pounds less than in his last fight against Oliver McCall. He is taking this occasion seriously. Bunch that numbers, Larry. Here we take a look at how active they are. Modestly active, throw about the same number of punches, land about the same number of punches, but they're going against the type of fighters neither of them has really faced before as professionals. Jabs, you can see Lewis is a little bit more active with his, but it's always been a pawing jab. He says he will make it a powerful jab this time. We'll see. Rules of the bout with our fight judge and pharmacist, Harold Letterman. The Lennox Lewis, Henry and one day fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell in the 12th and final round only. Jim. All right, Harold, and now Henry Akinwande will enter the ring first. Apparently to the sounds of Peter Gabriel. About a decade ago, Jim, he was sweeping streets around Trafalgar Square in London, working for the city as a street sweeper. And here he is trying to become the heavyweight champion. Foot seven inch fighter to get himself between the ring ropes and here's a look at the record 32 wins no losses the one draw was against bronze or check it axel schultz and 19 ko's for akinwande who did not used to be regarded as a heavy puncher 
but has greatly improved his right hand in the past year under Don Turner. Probably noticed promoter Don King in the ring with Akinwande. Should Akinwande win the title, then King will hold for the moment promotional control of all three of the major belt heavyweight titleists. Holyfield, WBA, Michael Moore, IBF. This bout is for the WBC title. Okay. A little bit of a delay in Lennox Lewis's exit from his dressing room. They think they have an edge because Akawande has never had a stay loose, stay big loose. occasion like this. Perhaps this is some gamesmanship going on. And you might have heard Don Turner telling Akinwande, stay loose, stay loose. For a big man, he is extremely well coordinated and has some very, very nice, well schooled skills. And now here enters Lewis. As you know, if you followed his career, he has roots to Jamaica and Canada as well as to Great Britain. Fought in the Olympics for Canada in 1988 when he won the super heavyweight gold medal, defeating Riddick Bowe in the final. I think he must think of himself as a true Brit now because recently he had a reception with the Queen who noted acutely that he was tall and a reception at Parliament as well. met with members of both houses of parliament so now we get ready to learn is he a lord of the ring or is he as common as cat litter soon to find out 30 wins the one loss to oliver mccall was sort of avenged in mccall's walk around in february 25 ko's for the hard punching lennox lewis and now let's go to michael buffer for the official introductions Ladies and gentlemen, main events and Caesars Tahoe, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you, in association with Don King Productions, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners, Nat Carasali, Luther Mack, Lorenzo Fertitta, and Dr. James Nave. Executive Director, Mark Ratner. And the World Boxing Council. President, Jose Suleiman, and WBC Supervisor at ringside, John Morris. The officials assigned at ringside. Physicians, Dr. Joseph Heflin. Dr. James McLennan and Dr. Craig Goodmanson. The timekeepers are John Rogers and Jim Carpenter. And the three judges assigned at ringside, scoring this foul on a 10-point must system, will be Larry O'Connell, Dalby Shirley, and Terry Smith. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee working for the 97th time in a world title belt, Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Tahoe, here at Lake Tahoe, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! In the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with white and weighing 237 pounds, his professional record stands at 33 bouts, 32 victories with one draw without a loss, and he has scored 19 knockouts. Fighting out of Tallahassee, Florida, here is the undefeated WBC number one ranked challenger, the former WBO world heavyweight champion, Henry Akinwande. And across the ring in the red corner, 
Wearing white and weighing 242 pounds, this 1988 Olympic gold medalist now has a professional record of 31 bouts. Victorious 30 times, 25 of those by knockout with only one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, the defending champion from East London, England, presenting the two-time WEC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Newell. Okay, gentlemen, uh, I've had the instruction. Manny, if he goes right here, I'm not going to call it low. Right here is going to be okay. Okay, Don? You've been through all the instructions at one time. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger, Chief Second? Champion, Chief Second. Let's get it on! Well, let's hope one or both of these fighters is as decisive as Mills Lane has been as a referee, recently and before recently. Round one begins. Should note here that it's a very small ring for big guys especially, about 17 and a half feet, which should favor Lewis, George. I think so, once you get the ring closer, where the big guys, no matter how big they are, you gotta throw punches at all times. There's no room to move around and look especially when you have this kind of reach. Well, it'll certainly favor Lewis and his harder punching if he can be aggressive. And he's come out aggressively, initiating the exchanges with Akinwande in the first 30 seconds of the fight. And Mills Lane already with a conference about holding. But generally, these guys are accustomed to jabbing, filling for a jab and jabbing, but the ring is so small that after a jab, they bump into one another. Wande has been told by his trainer Don Turner to move forward as he throws the jab. Likewise, Emmanuel Stewart is trying to get Lennox Lewis to be much more aggressive, to throw a George Foreman or Sonny Liston style jab and drive his body through behind it. Lennox in the past has, has a, had a habit of doing what Larry Merchant calls fighting from the back seat, throwing the jab but leaning backward as he does. Lewis trying to assert himself here and Akawande has to put some hurt on him to, to drive him away. Let him, Let him go, Henry. Let him go. Otherwise, Let Lewis go. will Come just on. keep coming. Akawande, within the last 20 seconds, beginning to release punches on his own. Before that, he was only fighting back as Lewis attacked. So now Akinwande will try to establish the jab, which is his key to winning the fight. Work, work out, work Lennox out. Lewis hey, will have the advantage of go. the left jab. Go. Hey, just got to forget about throwing a right hand and left hook and just stick with the left hand. First tackle of the fight. <laughs> come, come, come. Come here, come here. And it certainly is striking to see these two very large men in such work a small out, ring. Work out, work out. I think it's a mistake for Lennox Lewis to consider all that talk about get, getting more aggressive because then you get off. This guy is a well-schooled national Olympic champion. He knows how to box. Take your time, set everything up by jab, and you can do it. Let him it. go, Henry, let him go. Let him go, come on. So you've never felt that the way Lewis fights We're is bad on, for him on. as an attraction? It's great. He doesn't have short arms. He's not going to be able to get quick lock knockouts from underneath and things of that nature. He has long arms. You've got to fight within the, uh, in what you can do. Why do long arms mean that it would take him longer to knock people out? Oh, the guy can see that long arm coming. He's got lots of time to get away. A very decisive round for Lewis. Looking good. He's establishing yourself good. Okay, come on. This round, you're going to work a little bit more with the jab, but mentally you've broken him too already, okay? The man is not that strong mentally. And what's start, start working more with your jab as you move in. 
but you're looking good. And you're catching That's everything. Really I love where your hands are, because you're catching everything. I just hope you don't get smart and start trying to come up the room. Sit back and so you jump on you. See, that same thing we was talking in the dressing room. Just sidestep, sidestep. Get a little rhythm up in your upper body, okay? And sidestep this guy. You hear what he's saying, Henry? You yeah. hear what he's saying, Henry? You understand? Rhythm. Okay, just a little rhythm. Just like yeah, Just a little bit of his like body. Gym. You see, you can see? hit him with the right hand. Yeah. And he gonna run into some shit. Just be, be patient and wait. He'll run, but keep the jab out there. Here, just keep the jab out there, okay? Don't go straight. Back. Come on, come on. Okay. You understand? The box Dad. numbers show relatively low punch output okay, for both on. fighters in round number one. Let's see if they step up the activity in round two. Akinwande, urged by his corner to listen to instruction. And he may forget what they told him after that right hand by Lewis. A good right hand, right on top. Which is what Lennox Lewis has been doing his whole career. Power your jab, load up for a right hand like a baseball pitcher. The he does power the right you, hand straight over the top, George. The more power you put into a left jab, you're not going to have anything for your right hand. You're going to have to take all the power off and power and Paul, like he's been doing his career to get that right, right hand effect. Step back, Lennox. One step back, Henry. Come on. Let him go. So again, George going against what has been widespread opinion regarding Lewis. A lot of people complaining about the way he falls with his jab. George says that's the way for him to maintain the power in his right hand. That's what you do. Now. One point off here. One point removed from Akinwande. He's, he's saying to Aka one day, you're here to fight, not to hug. There's another hug. Step back. Step back, Well, Lewis has been talking for days about how he expected Akin Wande to wrap him in a bear hug. And Akin Wande has proven true to form. Hey. Back it off, both of you. One step back, come on. Let you see go. that referee, step back. Come on. his light weight, he'll wear out sooner or later pushing these big guys <laughs> back. And that's what he's hoping, the big tall guy. Let him go, let him go. Let him go. It's time. You go here. Time. Come up here. I'm gonna chase you. And you can do better than that, you understand? Hey, Brad, come on. Let's go. Come on. This is the way it's gonna have to be in boxing. The referee's gonna have to step up these days. Never going back to the days of gentlemanship. These guys are gonna break every rule. Well, we're two weeks removed from what's likely to become the most famous disqualification in the history of the sport. And Lane is threatening to end another heavyweight championship bout with a disqualification. Well, remember earlier I said he might try to hug him to death. And you heard Don Turner saying back in one day, don't let this guy disqualify you. So I can one day must respond. Mills Lane is being awful careful. The greatest danger of him stepping in there and getting hit himself. These guys are hitting while they are hugging. Step back. Step back, Henry. Come on. This looks like a mating dance between two boa constrictors. The only guy that can keep these guys apart would have to be the old <laughs> the Olympia champion. Was it? Olympia. Mr. Olympia. Mr. Step Olympia. Back. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Lee Haney. Lee Haney. Lee yeah, Haney one can of those push him people. apart. Otherwise, this referee is going to faint. Well, Mills is pretty dogged. Round two comes to a close, and Akinwande is flirting with disqualification danger. You're all right, man. You're all Look right. Let's get out there and fight this guy. He's going to throw his best shot at you. He ain't all got nothing. All you got to do is fight. Get let moving. Just get let moving in your legs. Okay, so the only reason he's hitting you is because you're not hitting him. This guy don't want to fight. He wants you in close. Stay outside. Use your oh, angle to angles, punch man. on this guy, man. You set that weight on him. Oh, you break him down. You break him down. You got to, when you get inside, you got to store short punches right away. Exactly. As soon as he reaches, you got to store short punches. Don't worry about big shots. He's grabbing you. You got to get up right away with quick shots. Work the left jab. 
hoop fakes and let him Here we see as Akawende clutched without really ever trying to fight in that instance. And a point was taken away from him. I think Lennox Lewis should just kind of stay with it. Punch the guy, wait for him to hug. When he lets go, punch him again, wait for him to hug. Why exert yourself? Hey, hey, hey. Look, when I still take a step back, you step back. Understand? Come on. I can wonder landed a good right hand this time. Little short one inside. He can counter. You heard Emmanuel Stewart saying, I hope the guy doesn't get smart and start throwing punches up the middle. And now Lewis backs Akinwande off again with a jab and a right hand. They both rely primarily on the one-two. Jab, right hand, jab, right hand. Lewis flashed a good uppercut and a left hook in some of his recent fights. And there's an attempt at the right uppercut right there. Akinwande grabs and holds again. Every time Lewis lands a punch, Akawande's instinct is to hold rather than punch back, George. And I think the Lewis should play right into it, hit him and stop exerting himself, trying to push him away. 12 rounds of that can wear him out also. Good quick jab by Akinwande lands there. Lewis almost went down from a right hand as Akinwande was pushing on his shoulder. So now Lennox's balance seems to desert him a little bit. I thought it might have been a knockdown, Jim. It was a surprise quick right hand as he moved in. His knee may have raised the canvas. It was close, that's for sure. But not ruled a knockdown, obviously. And now Akinwande is beginning to get into the fight if he can curb his instinct to hold. Let me tell you, that holding when you're a heavyweight can drive you and burn you out. After a couple of rounds, you may even faint from pushing and shoving. Who gets tired or faster, the Lennox holder Lewis or the holdee? Yeah. Lennox Lewis is throwing all the power punches, so he's probably the one in danger of getting tired here. He's already has his mouth open. Come on. Punch out, man. Come on, work out. Punch out. Lewis remembering to go to the body as they hold and clinch around the ring. We'll see if that serves him well over a long period of time. Well, he's fighting a very thin guy in Akawanda. He's accustomed to guys looking at his thin body and beating on it with those shots, so that's not going to bother him. Nevada State Athletic Commission's Commission officials sitting at ringside and no doubt hoping against hope that they don't see another disqualification in a heavyweight title fight in their state. Lewis goes to the body and effectively so. Effectively so, you're right. As round three comes to a close. Take a left hook to the body, okay? Start it and start, start going with the left hook to the body first, and anything you want after that, but go with the left hook to the body, okay? Go with the left hook to the body. It's very important. You start in here, slip over and dig the hook right in here, okay? And then come back on top of the right. I'll come back with a hook. Deep breath. Deep but breath. go with the left hook to the body. Linux, you got the Come on, let's go. Come on, son. Hey, in hell. Son, we had him. We had him just then. We got to put more punches together. You hear me? Yeah. Let's see if we can find out if that was a knockdown or a pushdown or. It really wasn't a knockdown. It was just the, the the pressure of the body that pushed him down. It seemed, but it could have been. I mean, I don't know what that is, George. What is it? Oh, it's right on top of the head. Those kind, when you're not accustomed to being hit there, hit there because you're taller, they have some effect on you. In round three, CompuBox numbers give. Lewis credit for landing 21 punches, many of them body shots. Akinwande landed only eight through only 26. And there he is clinching Lewis's head under his left arm. Could it be, George, that Akinwande's arms are so long that he just cannot resist his urge to hold? He can't do anything else. Evidently, he's not a short puncher, so when he's close, all he can do to protect himself is to hold. Now Akinwande begins to land that one-two more effectively. 
And the crowd begins to express its displeasure. Lewis tries a wild roundhouse right. Akinwande wraps him up. It ain't gonna be pretty. Ain't gonna be pretty, and we're gonna have a referee who's very tired. And Lewis, it looks as though he's almost worn out already. No doubt about it. Wobbling around. His corner has told him to throw these power that's punches, and that's what you don't want to do when you're fighting a guy going. grabbing like that. Take a step back. Just stay ahead on points, get your win, win every round. Lewis still doing an effective job of ducking and slipping. But that time he doesn't get a punch off before Akinwande leans all over it. Akinwande killing 8, 10, 12 seconds at a time. Just leaning all over Lewis. And he's doing a good job if the referee continues to let him do that. Lennox Lewis is going to faint. I can hear a lot of fans saying, well, if, if this is what's going to happen when we get a six foot five inch guy against a six foot seven inch guy, let's go back to the shorter heavyweights. They're more fun to watch. No, it's the rope. The ring is very small. There's no room to run. Should it have been bigger? I think so. Uh, but Lewis is making all the effort here. I mean, give him credit. He's trying to make a fight out of it. He's doing the best he can. You know, and, and it takes two to fight. And a professional fighter, if all he's interested in is hugging and squeezing and holding on, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. It's hard to imagine how much longer Lane can go without being forced to disqualify Akinwande. Hey, hey. He's in an awful bad position. Terrible. Step back means step back. Hey. Step back. Now, come on. Lane is in a terrible position, and so by extension is the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The body punches by Lewis are the most effective right now. Well, he's winning every round, George. I mean, I'm wouldn't you back. assume that Lewis has I'm won the first three rounds? No doubt about it, but he's also playing in the part of the old bull when the matador is sticking that thing over his neck, and he's being held like that. Eventually, things have to happen bad to you. Take a step back. Well, Lewis is not a great infighter, but Akawande hasn't got a clue back. about what infighting is about. Back. Solid punch there. Round four comes to a close. The crowd hopes for something better. Lewis tries to quell his mounting frustration. So what you gotta do, you, you're draining him slowly, okay? Yep. You're draining him slowly. Work the jab, but when you get off, you gotta get short punches out with him. See, you're trying to get set for big wide shots, and that's how he's grabbing you. You're trying to get big right hands, try to get out with short shots, your punches are too wide. And that's how he's able to grab you. Get short shots off, that's why he can't get inside. You understand, come up between. You run back, you're trying, don't forget that. Everything is those short shots. Henry, come on now, you ain't looking like nowhere near the gym. Come on, Henry. Come on, lift your head up, man. Take a deep breath. Come on, you let this guy intimidate you. Let this guy intimidate you. Get physical with this guy. Get physical with him. You hear me? He's stronger than he is. Let's go, Henry. You make yourself strong. Let's go. Come on, dog. Short punches. Speed and angles. Short punches. He's giving it up. Pressure with short punches. CompuBox numbers say that in the first four rounds, Henry Akinwande has thrown 95 punches. That's a total of 23 per round, or an average of 23 per round. We saw a heavyweight a couple of months ago, Ike Bayabuchi, who throws 95 punches in an average round. Lewis Corner gave him some good advice. Stay short. Harold, let him in quickly. How do you have the first four rounds? Larry, I got about a million things to say about this fight. Three rounds to one, 39-36, Lennox Lewis. Let me tell you something. When you get him with a legal punch that causes you anything to touch the uh, the canvas except the soles of your feet in the scoring area, that's a knockdown. That shot that, that, that uh, Henry landed in the third round was a knockdown. Therefore, he should have got the third round. As far as holding, it's illegal. If you got one, one hand free, you can punch with the free hand until the referee yells break. How soon should he be disqualified, Harold? Yeah, let me tell you, if Henry Akinwande keeps on holding, it's coming soon. I figure another two, three rounds, he's out of here. 
Larry Flames is in a, an embarrassing situation. Yeah, he he just had a big controversy disqualification in the state. He just don't want to do that quick. Look, and he looks like an Oreo cookie there, mixed in between those two big guys. Oh, Mills Lane is earning his money these days. Time that Lane has called next Don Turner up. You tell him next time he's gone, okay? You tell him. He's, hey, he's getting ready to disqualify you. you need to fight. Don't let him just. You need to about to drop him. dead, man. All you gotta do is fight him. Let's go. Fight him back. Get out of there. Well, it couldn't be any clearer than that. He just don't have any other defense. That's all there is to it. He just does not have any other defense. Let him go, Henry. Let him go. Let him go. You wonder what could be going through Akinwande's mind. I guess you're right, George. He's, He's just trying got... to protect himself from heavy punches, and you know, he doesn't know any other He's way. He's used to being able to fight with room between him and his opponents. He's been able to dictate that. And Lewis is not letting him dictate the geometry of the fight. And well, so he is utterly confused. 366 days ago, July 11, 1996, Galata disqualified while pounding Riddick Bowe in Madison Square Garden. Four months later, Atlantic City Convention Center, Galata. It's the end of the fight. We've had another disqualification. Yep. I was just about to get there. There you go. That's the fourth major disqualification in the heavyweight division in 366 days. It was inevitable. There was nothing else Lane could do. And I want to say, yep. give a, a gold crown to Mills Lane. He was in an almost impossible situation after two weeks ago to have to do this. And he had the guts to do what was right. Well, nobody's ever going to question Mill, Mills Lane's guts. It's just a shame, George. It's a crying shame. Yeah, it doesn't look good, but hey, sometimes you got to stand up and do what's right. And I'll say this. In a way, you can say Akka when they found a way to quit. There are a lot of ways to quit in the ring. Sometimes you can bite a guy's ear to quit. Sometimes you can have an emotional breakdown in the ring to quit. And we saw this guy clutching to quit and get out of there. That's the third Don King fight in a championship fight who has quit this in recently. Yes. This uh, is the Dan Duvas. This is the main event fight, though. Akawande works for Don King, George. Yeah, but Don King is not getting, uh, not making these guys quit. He's giving them money, but he's not the one responsible. <laughs> Let's go to Michael Buffer and hear the particulars. You, right you use the jab to drive him in the bad position. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mills Lane. After repeated warnings, point deductions, warned the challenger Henry Ekinwandi that he had to fight and stop holding. He had to disqualify the challenger, the winner. And still WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. So Lewis who picked up the WBC title for the second time in February when Oliver McCall wouldn't fight against him, now retains the title as Henry Akinwande refuses to stop holding. And Lewis is once again denied the spectacular knockout that he thinks he needs and a lot of people around him believe he needs to galvanize public opinion in his favor. Well, he's done a good job with his career. He hasn't had any trouble with the government. <laughs> Of course, he hasn't gone to prison, and so he, a lot of controversy will escape him. He's a nice guy, so he shouldn't worry about that. The big crowds will come if he keep winning. If they're qualified in this manner, they'll assume, hey, maybe he's doing something to make these guys hold and quit. Well, Harold Letterman yesterday in our fighter meeting with Henry Akinwande 
you asked him if he was going to hold. Jim, you know, he's done it in the past. You just saw it coming. It was a question I had to ask. Of course he denied it in a fighter meeting. But let me tell you, just like Larry said, Mills did the right thing. As far as Lennox goes, you notice when he did have a free hand, he punched like heck with that free hand in the clinches, which is really what you should do. Until the referee yells break, you punch with the free hand, and Lennox whacked him numerous times while they're in those clinches. And you have to do that. Perfectly legal. So Lewis did what he had to do. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring as he does what he has to do. <laughs> All right, thank you. Congratulations against Lennox. Are you frustrated that for the second time in a row a guy has basically quit on you? Yeah, I was, I was disappointed because obviously he didn't want to fight. You know, I was trying to fight. What can you do if a man doesn't want to fight you? All he did was hold. Do you feel that your aggression is what made him hold? Definitely, because as soon as I hit him with the first jab, I seen his face, and I realized that, you know, he didn't want no part of that. He was just depending on his left, right. But what can you do when a guy doesn't want to fight? Was the plan not to give him any room to use his longer arms than you and to box the way he likes to? I said from the beginning he was going to get mullered, and that's what I wanted to do, just mull him from the start. You know, because I realized he wasn't mentally or physically tougher than me. All right, you've made a change. You've been urged on by Emmanuel Stewart to become more aggressive, to do this kind of thing. Do you feel comfortable having done what you just did? Yeah, I feel comfortable. I wish, you know, Aki Wonder would have put on a little more of a fight so I can show some of my talents. But every second he got, he just held me, held on to me like, what can you say? All right, he hit you with a punch or a push punch or something on top of your head. It looked like your knee hit, hit the canvas. Did it? Was that a knockdown? No, I was, I was just uh, slipping the punch. <laughs> I was just slipping that one. So you don't think it was a knockdown? No, I actually won the can hit hard. I mean, you know, I, I came in expecting a fight, but he didn't want to fight. He just wanted to hug me up all night. All right, let me ask you, Emmanuel Stewart, you've been urging Lennox on to be less of a chess player, or if he's a chess player, to be a knight instead of a bishop. Yeah. Are you satisfied with what he did here, even under these circumstances? I was very satisfied. Lennox did all that he could do. He, he made it a physical fight. He crowded uh, Akin one day, and he took his boxing skills away. He tested his mental strength, and that was what I was satisfied heart, with. Heart, 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 heart. <laughs> what would you like to do next, Lennox? Basically, I just want to uh, go against the next challenger. You know, uh, Evander Holyfield is out there. He said there's nobody out there to fight him. I want to fight Evander Holyfield. All right, if, if Evander Holyfield wants to fight Michael Moore, uh, would you fight George Foreman? Who, who would you fight? I'll fight anybody. I've never ducked anybody. Everybody keeps on ducking me. I don't know why, but they keep on ducking me. But I'll fight anybody out there. Basically, I want to go after all the titles. I want to unify the titles. Thank you very much, Lennox Lewis. Back to you, Jim. All right, Larry and uh, George Foreman, let's take one more look at Mills Lane's last unrequited effort to make a prize fight out of this hug fest. And uh, the he final tried. disqualification of Henry Akinwande right there. And give Lane credit, he tried. He tried to make a fight of it. He did everything he could. He won, even talked to the corner people and insisted they speak with the guy. I've never seen it done so correctly. There are fans around here who are booing Lewis and calling him a bum. Does he deserve that? Not at all. This is not to be blamed on Don King. It's not to be blamed on Lennox Lewis. This is on a fighter's decision. He's accustomed to holding. Uh, evidently, the referee here just wasn't going to put up with it. But, uh, and that's what happened. The Nevada State Athletic Commission, as of a brand new piece of legislation in the past few days, would have the power, if they want to, to withhold Henry Akinwande's entire purse. Should they do it? Not at all. This guy did not know how to protect himself. The only way he knew how to keep this guy off of him was to hold. He didn't know any classic defense like you've seen the cover up in the, the rolls and Archie Moles. He didn't have anything but holding. All right, let's see what Akinwande has to say about it. He's with Larry. Hey, Henry Akinwande, tell us what you thought went on there. You were warned to stop holding. You couldn't stop holding. The referee stopped the fight. Give us your view of that. I didn't think um, most of the holding is um, it's my fault because uh, we are we both uh, tried to go forward. And uh, I mean, he's tall and I'm tall, you know. So there's no, I mean, we don't, we can, I can find a way to walk inside and I start to get close to him. And uh, by the time I realized it, the referee was um, start wanting me, you know, that I start, I, mean, I should stop holding. Because I mean, the referee said, I mean, sometimes step, I mean, step, I mean, step backward. 
I try to make a step backward, but he's not making any step. All right, so that would you say that he didn't give you any room to box, and that's what caused the, these wrestling matches? Uh, I think uh, that is part of it. You know, but uh, right now, I don't have anything to say. Uh, you must be very, very disappointed after trying so hard for so long to get here. Um, I'm very disappointed, you know, but um, <laughs> I'll come back again. Thank you very much, Henry. All right, Mills Lane is here with us. Mills, this must have been an extraordinarily difficult task for you after what happened two weeks ago to have to stop another championship fight. Yeah, it is. It, 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 Larry, it's the worst thing. A DQ is the worst thing. But there's, there's certain protocol. And once you get outside of it, I mean, there's nothing else you can do. You warned them early about all of the clutching, and you saw that Akawande was the main culprit, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He wouldn't even step back. I finally said, this is what stepping back is. This is what you do when you step back. Have you uh, refereed a fight of his before? Not of his. Of Lennox Lewis's twice, but not of his. Have you seen him fight before? Oh, yes. Yeah, he can fight. Was he just having difficulty because Lewis wasn't giving him any room to do anything and he basically didn't know how to deal with that situation? Larry, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know he could have punched more and he could have thrown punches. The guy can whack a little bit. I just don't understand. Maybe he froze, or maybe we just have to give credit to Lennox Lewis for making that happen. Maybe. I don't know. Thank you very much, Mills Lane. Thank you, sir. Jim? All right. Thanks, Larry. Let's cover one last point one more time. You pointed out a couple of times, George, it's an 18-foot ring with two very big men in it. We've seen 22-foot rings plenty of times. How different might it have looked in a 22-foot ring? A lot different. Every time this guy, Lewis, would land that powerful jab, this guy had no room to back up and he couldn't make him back away, so he just held him. And it's unconsciously, someone should have taught him better. Some of these guys get to be number one contenders without any experience on how to fight certain fights. You heard Akinwande's argument. I wanted to go forward and get inside. He wanted to do the same thing. That's how it happened. Any merit in that? No doubt about it. I think he, he just didn't know what to do. He tried to do his thing, but the holding got to be so easy, he just kept on. Then it got, he didn't know what else to do. All right. I think we're going to go from It's not here an excuse at all. I understand. But he just did not know what to do. I understand. Well, that's why he got disqualified. In the end, that's what <laughs> loses him the fight. So let's go now to a look at the reordered heavyweight division in the wake of Lennox Lewis's victory today, retaining his one-third of the title belt picture in the division. In the heavyweight division, for most of the past 10 years, all roads have led through Mike Tyson. Iron Mike strolled through the division, took an unexpected detour, though, with Evander Holyfield's shocking and shockingly easy knockout victory last November. Now, after a second straight Holyfield victory over Tyson, this one the shameful disqualification which has led to Mike's suspension from the sport, the division is again turned on its ear. Now Evander Holyfield stands alone atop a crazy quilt heavyweight heap, and he must decide whether it's title belts or record purses he's after, as the two goals may follow divergent paths. Michael Moore! If it's a unified title Holyfield wants, the road may first point to Michael Moore, who won his first heavyweight title from Holyfield. But Moore's poor performance in March against Von Veen confirmed trainer Teddy Atlas's earlier decision to lead the two-time champ. Your son is on the freaking phone crying and we get on the phone. He lost in his 1994 knockout at the hands of George Foreman. Foreman. Big George is enjoying yet another resurgence after his battering of Lou Savarese in April. Foreman may be Evander's biggest non Tyson payday and would love a chance to avenge his 1991 defeat. If enough money is offered for a rematch, a September HBO date penciled in for Foreman could be in jeopardy. Lennox Lewis is still searching for a fight or an opponent to define him as an elite fighter. Lewis will be hoping for his own unification bout with Holyfield, who could bring Lennox the acclaim he feels he deserves. Get that sense. Now goes Morrison again. 
so too could a fight with Andrew Galata, who faces Ray Mercer August 16. Galata, who burst on the scene with his two wild disqualification losses to Riddick Bowe, may be the most dangerous heavyweight in the world. But can he fight within the rules? Andrew Galata has little margin for error if he's to realize his championship potential. was once thought to be the division's best. Now, two physical beatings and an aborted attempt at becoming a Marine later, Riddick has, at least for now, settled into early retirement at age 29. So in the past year, the heavyweight division has given more black eyes to the sport than its combatants have given to each other. And as the division's best readjust their sights on Holyfield, boxing's image itself continues to cry out for help. And we mentioned to you during the fight how excruciating this must have been for the Nevada State Athletic Commission in a heavyweight division in which fiascos and disqualifications in title fights seem to have become the norm rather than the exception. Standing by now, the executive director of that commission, Mr. Mark Ratner, is our Larry Merchant. All right, thank you, Jim. Mark, second time in two weeks, you try to regulate boxing, you try to help promote boxing. What are your thoughts about it? both in your official and unofficial capacities? Uh, I'm actually almost tearful right now. I, I love the sport so much. Uh, I can't believe we had a problem today. I, th I thought today would be an another good day, and, and it's not. Uh, the commission will hold its purse. We will have a hearing. It sounds familiar, but we're going to go through the same process. All right, but there's something else in play now, which is that since the Tyson-Holyfield fight, the state of Nevada has passed a law that states they can withhold the entire purse from a disqualified fighter. Is that possible here? Uh, that law was passed uh, and signed uh, yesterday morning at 9 o'clock uh, from now on, and uh, certainly that'll be an option of the commission. Or to impose a higher than, say, 10 percent penalty, which was the rule in the past. That is correct. So uh, it just gives the commission uh, another way to go, uh, another option. What are you hearing about this kind of potential draconian rule of taking away an entire purse from a fighter who doesn't live up to his contract to come here and fight? Well, the state of Nevada, we, we want good fights, and uh, we're hoping that this law will uh, prevent some of these things, that the fighters will think twice. And I'm the most shocked guy in the world today. Is this a threat? to the boxing business in the state of Nevada to have this kind of activity going on and on and on? Well, it, it, it's a sad thing for the whole sport of the, and uh, sure, it, it's not good for the, for the state, but it's the most resilient of all sports, and I feel very strongly. We have some great fighters out there, great fights that are gonna happen, and the, and the game will survive. Next week, there's a fight between Tapia and Romero. A lot of people have been looking forward to it for a long time. But as a fallout, apparently, from the Tyson Holyfield uh, extravaganza, the Hilton Hotel has dropped that fight. Uh, are you worried about security at the MAC Arena? Are you worried about what the continuing fallout will be? Uh, we take precautions before every fight, uh, and I will meet, be meeting with both camps on Tuesday morning to go over exactly what we expect. Uh, we'll have security in place. We meet with the police department before every fight, and uh, I, I am very confident that we'll be ready for anything. Is that a fight especially that you are going to bolster security because of the high feelings involved? Uh, of the alleged uh, problems between the two camps. Uh, sure, we'll have a, uh, extra police there just to uh, be precautionary. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, sir. Jim, once back, again, back to you. All right, thank you, Larry. And just for the record, we attempted to get an interview with promoter Don King in the ring, the man who promotes Akinwande, and he declined to speak with us. George, uh, fans here at ringside want you to do something to bring excitement back to the heavyweight division. They're calling for you to help clean all this up and your recent performance against Lou Savary shows you're still very much an active force. What are you going to do to bring competition back to the heavyweight division? You know, I'll sh as much as I'd like to be boxing salvation, 
I'm getting old. Someone is going to have to come up. First time you've ever said that. <laughs> and I just can't be around forever. That's I'd the like real to, news from today's yeah, show. Yeah, but huh? I'd like to stick around and fight a couple of these guys. But year after year, I just won't be able to do it. We're going to have to find someone else. Would you fight Lennox Lewis if I'd, he can't get a fight with Holyfield? No doubt about it. I'd fight him. You would sign a contract to fight Lennox Lewis yes, now? Surely. Without another fight in between? As they say in my home, show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, George, you're on record for that. Thanks very much. Larry, your final comments about the heavyweight division before we move forward for another look at uh, Tapio Romero coming up next week. Well, in the best of all worlds, uh, Evander Holyfield uh, will fight Michael Moore. We understand that that's what he really wants to do, to unify two of the titles. And perhaps Lennox Lewis will fight George, and the winners will meet each other. But uh, in, in, the, in boxing, uh, the best laid plans usually go awry. Well, we'll see about uh, how that plays out next week. You heard Larry talking with Mark Ratner about plans for next week's battle between Johnny Tapia and Danny Romero, now in the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Surely the most unusual, the most heartfelt, in many ways the most personally dramatic matchup in all of boxing this year. He just doesn't let you breathe. Oh. And down goes Marchie. This body assault by 115-pound world champion Johnny Tapia brought Jorge Barrera to his knees. To a hometown crowd at the Albuquerque Convention Center, Tapia shouted a message. Moments later, Danny Romero answered Tapia's challenge with a knockout of his own, paving the way for these two junior bantamweight champions to settle an Albuquerque turf war that's been brewing since they were boys. I got to dispose of a little, uh, a little gnat that has been all over me, so it's time to get, get rid of it. Talk of a Tapio Romero fight stretches as far back as 1990, in the town where the two fighters who has boys trained in the same gym grew into men with very different lives. They came to represent opposite sides of their community's experience. In October 1990, undefeated Johnny Tapia was overtaken by his drug addiction beginning a three-and-a-half-year absence from the ring, during which drug overdoses nearly took his life. He needed to make the decision that he was going to quit to save his life and to save his marriage and to move on with his future, because if he wouldn't have, he would have been dead. Danny Romero has faced no such difficulties. A thoughtful 23-year-old, painstakingly nurtured and molded by his father to be a championship fighter and a model citizen, Romero has steered away from the street scourges that snared Tapia and so many others. You know, I always had uh, one love, and that was boxing. And I knew what could take me away from that. Drugs, gangs, and, and, and things in that, in that nature. When he survived his 41-month suspension, Johnny Tapia cleaned himself up. And by late 1994, the build-up to the fight for Albuquerque was back on track. But in a routine tune-up, a crushing right hand from journeyman Willie Salazar fractured Romero's orbital socket. Recovery from eye surgery took a year. The main thing is your vision is back. Yeah. And that's I feel good. But eventually, Danny returned to his winning ways in the ring. Now the final obstacles were cleared for this unique blood wedding of boxing. But true to character, Johnny Taffy is in a period of turbulence. In late June, veteran trainer Jesse Reed was suddenly let go. Tapia went to Emmanuel Stewart, but Stewart's plate was full. Eventually, the search for a trainer landed the Tapias in Las Vegas with the legendary Eddie Futch. So for Johnny Tapia, his crazy life continues, even in the hours leading up to the defining fight of his career. While in natural contrast, Danny Romero trains quietly and systematically with his father. Conventional wisdom says that's an advantage for Romero. But among all the things Johnny Tapia has lost and found in his unenviable tough trip through life, the one thing he's never lost is a prize fight. So there it is, George. They've known each other for years. They've looked forward to this occasion for years. Most people seem to think that means we'll see a great fight. Will no we? doubt about it. It's those kind of fighters who've truly made boxing fans. If they, this fight can really restore boxing to its grandeur, no right. doubt about it. It can be a dramatic and glorious occasion. Let's hope it comes off incident-free. What's your instinct about what we're going to see next Friday night? We're going to see two athletes take themselves to the limit. The hardest feelings between two fighters 
I have ever seen. It should be a fight to, to remember. Indeed, and, and both of them great fighters in their own right, regardless of who wins next Friday night. Well, we saw a potentially great fighter on the undercard here today. Welterweight Fernando Vargas, American Olympian, now rising prospect in the sport. Four wins coming in, all by knockout. Today, he faced an opponent named Eugene Lopez in a scheduled six-round bout, and this took place in the very first round. You're going to see Vargas throw the left hook, which he does brilliantly, and a body shot, and that's going to be the end of it for Lopez. This didn't take long. Left to the body after a right to the body, and... Uh, Lopez decided to take the full 10 count. Six, seven. As he said to his corner pretty shortly after that that he simply hadn't been able to breathe after Vargas dug that left of the rib cage. Fernando Vargas, we'll be seeing more of him in the years to come in the 147 pound weight class. And as we look down the road toward the future of a fighter like Fernando Vargas and the short-term future, uh, our excitement about next Friday night's fight between Mexican-Americans Johnny Tapia and Danny Romero, let's take a look ahead now to an upcoming program on HBO, another HBO sports documentary, which harkens back to a simpler, more innocent time in sports and relives that period through the life of one of its greatest personalities. Coming in October, HBO's exclusive documentary, Where Have You Gone, Joe DiMaggio. You'll see one of America's most beloved but reclusive icons as you've never seen him before through the use of home movies and rare film. HBO chronicles Joe's baseball career, his marriage with Marilyn Monroe, and his life since, giving you a side of Joe you haven't seen before. Don't miss it. All right. One more word from George Foreman. I hope it gets better before it gets worse in the heavyweight division. Well, not only that, we have Oscar De La Hoya in the lower division. He's going to he's really restore things. We'll be seeing him in September as well, and maybe you on September 20. We'll wait to and see about that. we better see Larry that. along with us. Absolutely right. That's right. Larry, your final thoughts about uh, today's affair and our upcoming boxing on HBO. What I've been thinking about is that there used to be a phrase that uh, in sports that we lifted from earning Ernest Hemingway called... Uh, grace under pressure. Grace under pressure meant true courage. What grace under pressure did, did we see from Oliver McCall? What grace under pressure did we see from Mike Tyson? What grace under pressure have we seen tonight from Henry Akawande? I beg to differ with my good friend George Foreman about Don King's role in all of this. Henry Akawande, as George said, did not have the experience to know how to fight inside couldn't stop himself from grabbing his opponent. What in the world was he doing here? How in the world did he become a number okay. one mandatory challenger for a championship? I'll tell you, Don King has corrupted the system. He's corrupted the rankings okay. so that stumble bums like this can get championship fights in the heavyweight division because there's so much money in the heavyweight division. That's why he's responsible. I could go into more depth about his responsibility for Tyson. I could go into more, much more depth about his responsibility for Oliver McCall, who was a drug addict, and people were pleading him to stop that fight, and he refused. That's why we have this in boxing tonight. He's not responsible, Don King, for all of the disqualifications well, in this you're sport. Right, Larry. You shouldn't, you shouldn't but, say responsible. But in this case, I believe he has a responsibility. The discussion will be ongoing between George and Larry after we leave the air. In the meantime, I'll have a final word. That's, there you go. <laughs> Let's put him in the ring. Maybe it'd be better. Let's look at some upcoming programs on HBO and then a final word about what happened in the ring here today.